Well, hello everyone. Welcome to our uh, live stream today. I'm here at the Franklin Farm with uh, Angie, our amazing keeper, as well as our newest addition to the Franklin Park Zoo family, Betty the Morgan Horse. Um, so today I'll be talking a little bit about Betty herself, what makes her so special, also the history of Morgan horses and why they're so important. Uh, if anyone has any questions, my colleague with the cell phone will be able to read them out to me and I'll be able to answer and hopefully we'll be able to get to as many as we can today as possible. So like I said, Betty is an example of what we call a Morgan horse. Uh, Morgan horses are what we call a heritage breed. Uh, these are animals that are domestic uh, animal species, typically livestock, that have some historical, cultural, or any other sort of importance. Um, Morgan horses all trace their ancestry back to a single horse uh, named Figure who lived in the late 1700s, uh, bred by a man named Justin Morgan, hence the name of the breed. Um, this makes being bred in the 1700s in Massachusetts makes them one of the oldest uh, domestic horse species from the United States. Um, so being that old, um, they've played major roles in a lot of American history. Um, they were used as um, for a lot of labor on farms, pulling carts, pulling tracks, um, but also as cavalry horses during the Civil War they were very valued as cavalry animals so uh, that were ridden by soldiers into, into battle. Um, so right now Angie is doing some grooming uh, so brushing out Betty's coat, keeping her nice and clean, grooming, things like brushing and uh, other um, husbandry practices are really important to the health and well-being of horses. Um, so that helps to keep their coats nice and clean, nice and healthy, just like we like to brush out our hair to make sure that we stay nice and clean and healthy. Um, and we do this every day. It's part of the excellent and necessary care that we provide here at Franklin Park Zoo for our animals. Um, so Betty recently came to us actually from a rescue. Um, she sustained a leg injury a while ago. Um, we don't know her full history, but because of that she can't be ridden or used as a work animal like most horses are. Um, but she has an amazing personality. She's, like I said, a really special horse. Um, and she loves people. She's very social, uh, which makes her a perfect uh, member of the uh, Franklin Farm family. Um, She's, we don't know her exact birthday because she's a rescue, uh, but she's estimated to be around 12 years old. It's kind of a middle age for horses. Um, they can live up to be in their early 30s. Um, but So she's fully grown, um, and she's just a really wonderful horse. She gets along really well with uh, one of our other horses, Brownie, um, even though there is an age uh, difference and a size difference since she's a large workhorse and Brownie is a much smaller animal but they are, both have great dispositions. Um, um, that's one of the key traits of a Morgan horse, actually. Um, their good personalities, their strength, and their um, kind of sociability is why they were so useful and so valuable throughout history as draft horses. Um, <laughs> she's getting a little excited. I'm sure she loves being pampered, getting her little spa treatment, um, just like going to the salon for a human. Um, yeah. Do we have any questions yet in the chat? Just wanted to check. Oh, absolutely. So we provide enrichment for all of our animals here. Um, if you're not familiar with the term, enrichment is the fancy industry term for anything we do to enrich the lives of our animals. Um, so these are uh, puzzles, toys, um, different food items, different sensory experiences so that our animals don't get bored. Um, so for um, farm animals, this can be um, varying up their diet. So grain is obviously a staple for uh, a horse like Betty, but uh, they get lots of treats, so lots of fruit like apples and sweet potatoes are also another favorite. Um, getting to experience different settings throughout the uh, zoo, so this is obviously her main habitat here um, in the Franklin farm, but um, you know sometimes our animals do get to kind of get around, get to see different things. Um, it's obviously a bit more doable with the domestic species than some others, but um, yeah. Do you have any uh, examples of things that you've done for Betty for enrichment? Yeah, um, we do have different corrals that we can rotate them to. You might want to keep that to a couple Um So she actually has. Uh, we have a corral that she first came into when she was in quarantine, 
um, and she had a short stay up there which has some grass and we'll probably do be doing some rotational areas up there so she'll get to kind of experience different uh, places and get different types of exercise um, but for now she's still getting settled in and she's with Brownie who hasn't had a companion in some time so he's pretty happy about that um, but Brownie is on a very special diet and can't get a lot of grass so he won't be able to go up to that corral um, so we'll probably start rotating her once she's kind of settled in here and given some time with Brownie we also do um, misters when it's very hot she doesn't really like it but she does sometimes like a, a hose down so we'll kind of give her use a hose and kind of spray both of the horses down just to cool them off and they do enjoy that um, we also make popsicles with them for them uh, with different types of produce that they enjoy um, brownie can only get a limited amount but we use what we can with him and they seem to enjoy that as well so uh in case anyone couldn't hear i'm just going to repeat part of that uh since i have the microphone um so a lot of the enrichment they get is different types of food animals uh, uh food animals food items sorry it's a little hot um, different types of food items um, she mentioned that especially on a hot day like today uh, giving them ice treats so frozen popsicles frozen parts of their diet uh, are really important to them helps them keep cool and comfortable we also give them misters to help control the ambient temperature so they stay nice and comfortable um, uh, those are located mostly inside of their uh, pens out in the barn um, So they are domestic species. Um, they so horses in general not endangered. Um, they would be filed under least concern. But uh, as a heritage breed, um, the specific breed of horse, Morgan horses, uh, are considered a little bit more rare. Um, and part of this has to do with the fact that they've just existed for so long. Um, so a lot of Morgan horses have been bred with other horses. So there's not that many purebred Morgans out in the world. Um, just going to move a little bit so I'm not behind her. But um, being heritage breeds, we really do prioritize conservation of them since they have played such an important cultural and historical role. Um, it's amazing to have these animals around so we can learn, like, what sort of roles were they playing in history? What sort of um, importance they've played? Uh, heritage breeds also often have different traits um, than the more mainstream versions that you see. Um, so a lot of uh, livestock are bred for specific jobs. So they might be racehorses bred for nothing but speed, um, cows built for nothing but milk production. Um, whereas historical breeds were typically a lot less um, specialized for a specific task, more jacks of all trades. Um, you know, since they predate factory farming, the hyper-efficient system we have now. Um, so they also serve really important roles to their species as the conservators of different genetic traits, different uh, physical traits that might be useful to have around in the future. Um, whereas if these historical breeds were lost, if they were entirely replaced with more modern breeds, um, those traits would likewise be lost. So conserving um, endangered breeds is just as important as conserving endangered species. Um, so horses as a whole, not endangered, but we do really prioritize the conservation of heritage breeds here at the Franklin Farm. In fact, most of, if I'm not mistaken most of our domestic species here are uh, heritage breeds uh, some other, another example would be our um, Poitou donkey uh, who lives up in children's zoo um, those are also an example of a heritage breed that has come almost to the brink of extinction um, you know just because the needs of agriculturalists and farmers were changed over time um, you know we don't really need horses at, as much these days for pulling carts or for cavalry. So that's why they were bred slightly less than they were in the past and that they're now considered heritage breeds. I guess just to, um, just to summary, like what can people find, what animals will they see if they come to see them totally. and others at Franklin Farm? Totally. So um, if you do come to see us at Franklin Farm, first of all, we'd be happy to have you here. Um, so if you do come to see Betty, you would get to see all of our other uh, farm animals here. So Brownie, our other horse who shares the space with um, Betty would be one example, our dwarf goats. We also have sheep here. We have um, chickens that are a little bit farther back in this space. Um, we have, like I said, Poitou donkeys that live in children's zoo, so still an example of our um, heritage farm animals. Um, 
next door to us is the children's zoo, um, which has the Patu donkeys, also our prairie dogs, and our red pandas. So lots of amazing animals to come see here uh, to say hi to while you're getting to know Betty. All right. So it seems like that's about all we have time for today. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in and getting to know and appreciate Betty with us today. Um, hope to see you real soon sometime at Franklin Park Zoo, and hopefully you guys get to come and meet Betty in person. Have a great day.